Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna share with you three things that you're gonna to wanna to do to make your first million. My name's Nicholas Bailey. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, you're gonna to want to. You may be thinking, why would I listen to this guy that looks like he's like 20 years old about this subject? Should I listen to people that have done it before? If I shave this goatee, dude, you'd think I was like just graduating like eighth grade. Believe me, that's why I actually grew it out. And I totally understand that. I totally believe that you actually should learn from people that have actually done things before. Not learning from the people that just talk about it, not learning from the people that had failed, not learning about people that have just read a book, but if you're gonna learn something of how to do something, meaning like this is how you do it and I've done it before, you should probably do it from people that have done it. For me, I struggled big time. I struggled in business, I struggled my weight. I was 60 pounds overweight going through high school. It wasn't until one kid changed my life with a piece of information just like this that it caused me to lose the 60 pounds. I then attracted my wife, then we got married and I was completely broke. I was trying to figure out what could we do to be able to live the life that we wanted and I stumbled across business, internet marketing and I failed for three years. I failed because I didn't have the right education. I failed because I didn't have the right mindset. I didn't have the right connections. I didn't have a plethora of different things. And I started off way back because I was a kid who had a broken family, who graduated with a 1.8 GPA. I didn't have anything going for me. I didn't know how to speak on camera like this. And since then, we've been able to build a coaching business inside of health, but now BDB, the movement that we have with men as well, created a seven-figure business, been featured in Forbes, been featured in Entrepreneur. We didn't pay for those features either. They actually featured us. We've spoken on stages with tens of thousands of people across the world, uh, including one Funnel Hacking Live in 2019 that had over 5,000 entrepreneurs at it. My friend Russell Brunson holds that event. And so we've not only done this stuff before, but we've actually gone through the hard stuff. There's a lot of people out there that maybe had success. Congratulations, like having success easy is amazing, but that's why some of the best athletes in the world don't become coaches. They don't teach this stuff because they don't go through the same struggle that the average person does. So if you're someone that's just had massive success in business, and you haven't had any failures, this probably isn't the best video for you. Because for me, I had massive failure, but just failure isn't good enough either. There's a lot of people out there that just wanna teach about relationships even that have just been divorced. It's like, great, you, you've failed, but that, that's not what I wanna learn from. I wanna learn from someone who failed and then had success on the other side, and that's what we're gonna talk about here today, broken down into three core subjects. So I'm actually gonna jump into it, into the three things that you can do right now to make your first million. Number one, and this is something that I believe that almost every single person in the world does, these are founding principles. I always like to ask myself, sometimes I don't know what to do in business, life to get my vision out there, but I do know the foundational things that no matter what need to be done, no matter what direction I'm gonna go. So these are gonna be foundational things that you can literally start doing today. The number one thing, the first thing, is to go out there and find something that you're passionate about that you can cast the vision of. So this is something that you wanna break down. And I remember when I was 20 years old and I got married, I felt that feeling that I needed to have these responsibilities, like I had these responsibilities now in my life and I couldn't just go out there and live regular life. I had to figure out how am I gonna provide for my new relationship and my new family. And so the way that we did that is we first didn't know like what type of life we wanted to live. Maybe you don't know what type of business you wanna have, what type of life necessarily you wanna live, like you don't know the ex exact direction. But first we actually went through and figured out what are the things we don't want? So we had just gotten married. I'm like, well, I don't wanna be apart from my wife. That's the first thing. I looked at it and I was like, man, I don't want to you know, have to work for someone else and, not, and have limited income capacity. So I wanted exponential income potential. So I wanted something that I can continue to grow in. I wanted something that challenged me, that pushed me, that made me grow. And I didn't wanna be apart from my wife. And then after that, I went through a couple other questions of things like, what do I like to do? I scripted some of those things out. What am I actually good at? Because what we like to do may not be what we're good at and we probably should be good at the things if we wanna get paid to do it. And then the last thing was kind of like, what is this life that I wanted to create? You know, what is the type of uh, vision that I had for my life? Where did I see myself going? And that way that all these things align. And what was so interesting is, is looking at what is the life that I didn't wanna live. So there was a lot of things that accomplished that. I could X those out. I could figure out again, what is the life I do wanna live? Like what type of freedom do I want, right? Like, like let's say I wanna, I, I know that I wanna make a lot of money. Well then I'm probably not gonna go out there and be something like, and I apologize if anyone is this, but like a, a fifth grade school teacher. Right? There's only a certain amount of money that you can make as a fifth grade school teacher. And so if I already choose that, then I already know I'm not gonna create the life that I want, and then I'm gonna wake up 20 years later and all of a sudden I'm gonna figure out I'm not in the right spot. 
So that's why I went out there and I was like, okay, what could I do to be able to achieve the life that I want? So ask yourself those questions as a filter to spit out a few answers because I was like going through and I was like, what am I good at? What do I like to do? What is something that fits inside of my vision? Like what do I want to create? And inside that vision, you want to make sure that you drill it down. Like think about this real quick. One person might say they want to bring families together. Like they're so passionate about that. And that's amazing, and, one, and that person could go, I wanna be a marriage and family therapist, right? Like, or a coach to families. And that's amazing, and the other person maybe could say, I wanna start a restaurant, right? Because a restaurant could have a theme around getting families together to be able to connect over a meal. So not only does it have to be surfacey, you could really break this down. The reason I love to go through these different options is because I see so many people out there in the world with a thing that they're plagued by called shiny object syndrome. Shiny object syndrome looks like, okay, I, I have this thing that I'm focused on, but every single time there's a new idea out there or someone else that's doing something, I always get, like, I get distracted by all these different things out there because I'm not sure and committed to the thing that I want to do. What happens when you go through this and find out what you're truly passionate about that you could focus on, that focus on one thing is going to actually increase desire one, but two, it's gonna allow you to see other shiny objects as something that you've already decided not to do because you've fully committed to this lane. So the reason you wanna pick something that you're actually passionate about is because there's plenty of people out there that are passionate about what they do, and if your competition is passionate and you're not, well then who's gonna win at the end of the day? It's like being in a fight and you don't really wanna fight, but that person's fighting tooth and nail to the death. Even if you're a better fighter, they're probably gonna win because they want it more. So how does that work on the flip side? You, as the entrepreneur, if you go into an area that you're excited about, that you're good at, that you like to do, that you're passionate about, and that you've noticed, like you broke it down to like, this is what I wanna do, now all of a sudden you have this longevity, the, consistently, the consistency that creates results, but also you have the passion that allows you to go above and beyond what your competition will not do. So what's number two? Now that you figured out like what's the passion that I have, like what's the thing I wanna go full throttle at, and you've kind of broken that down. Number two is how do I cast the vision and, and build an audience around this vision that I now created? Now you have this mission and vision no product or service, you just have this mission and vision that you wanna create, that you're passionate about, and how do I speak that? And I found that there's really four ways that you could speak this message. And you look at everyone in the world and they've always had a spokesperson for anything that's actually built really quick. Like you look at Mark Zuckerberg and you think of Facebook. You look at Bezos and you think of Amazon. These are people that other people can trust that are carrying this mission and vision so that people can connect with it. The old school way of business is just having a business that tries to build its own reputation but people don't trust brands, they trust people. People don't follow brands, they follow people. So one of the ways to do that is one, speaking about that mission and vision and getting other people that align with it that want to be a part of it. See, most people live their life without an actual vision themselves. So when you start speaking that vision that's in number one, they actually will come in and come into provision or they're coming to submission, which means that you have a mission and they're gonna come under it and start submitting to your mission because they wanna be a part of something. What I found is that even in the Super Bowl, if you're sitting on the bench and your team wins, you get a Super Bowl ring. People wanna be a part of the winning team. So when you're speaking that message with confidence over and over, people are gonna assume that it is truth and what's gonna be able to happen is that people will come alongside you. So that's number one, speaking the mission and vision of the company. I remember for me, like I told you that when I was first starting out at 20, I was trying to figure out and refine my message of what I wanted to do. I knew the life that I wanted to create, but I didn't have all these three things together. So then when it came to actually speaking this mission and vision, I remember sitting in my house and I was listening to one of my mentors, Russell Brunson, he's like, you need something bigger. Like, what are you guys going towards? What's the future-based cause? Like, what are you guys trying to create? And I was like, wow, I've only had like a product that I went and tried to sell to people. Like, I had a health coaching product, and I was like, who needs to lose weight, right? And I just tried to sell, sell, sell the product, and I didn't get people enrolled in the vision. And then all of a sudden, it just sparked for me, like, what is that overarching vision that I can now speak to people? And it was all around redefining what it meant to be a businessman, changing the dictionary definition that you cannot be a businessman without prospering health, wealth, and relationships and creating what we call a three-dimensional businessman. And I started speaking that message and making it the overarching theme of we're redefining what it means to be a businessman. And all of a sudden, like we, we had these people start coming around it and it gave me the ability to get passion around it. So number two inside of that, uh, the four different ways that you could do this is that number two is speaking your own story. 
for so long I tried to hide my own story, but I was actually passionate about the business that I was in because of the problems that I had been through in my life. I was 60 pounds overweight inside in my business. Like I was 60 pounds overweight. I didn't have a girlfriend for seven years and I struggled in business for three years with never making more than $3,000 in a month and overcame that. And I wanted to bring this whole thing together where my life and success was found not inside of sacrifice, my health and my relationships, it came all together. So I found that inside of myself and I started speaking that message. I started speaking the message of why I got overweight and how my dad and I got into a big conflict. I started talking about my insecurities with my body. I started talking about the troubles that I had inside of business and that I went through every single day. And so not only did I have the mission and vision of redefining what it means to be a businessman, I started speaking about it on social media platforms, on, on YouTube videos like this. Everywhere that I was going, I spoke about this message. I also spoke about my story and how I overcame things. And people that had those similar problems started coming around it again because right now we're building that audience. Number three is sharing some of the people that you've worked with. Maybe you've worked with people, you start working and creating case studies in the area that you want to transform. And you start working with people and you start sharing other people's story that they had gone through those same things. So there's going to be some times where you share your story that's going to bring in an audience for you that they're going to trust you and want to buy your stuff. And then also there's going to be the side of how can you share other people's story to attract people and relate to people that you cannot. Because if you just tell your story, not everyone's going to relate to it. And then the fourth thing is sharing stories that help people understand what you're talking about. This is what my mentor Russell Brunson would call an epiphany bridge, right? This is where people are at. This is where they want to be. You're already over here and it's like, how do you get them to understand this bridge to take them from one form of thinking over to another form of thinking? And one of the ones that I use in, as an example is like, I remember, and you can find these every single day. I remember hiking this mountain. It's like 9,000 foot up and I was at the very top of it and I was overlooking. I took a picture and I thought, I was like, how can I relate this to my audience? How can I get my audience to believe in live events and investing in themselves and coming to live events to get educated and build their network. That's what I wanted. So my friends are over here. They're not sure if they could want to come to the event and I want to get them over here where they just absolutely need to invest. And I just sat there and I was like, you know what? There's three types of people that would climb this mountain. One is a person that would never climb. They would just judge everyone else. You know those people out there. And I was like, there's probably none of them reading my post or watching this video. But there's people out there that are like, LeBron should have shot the ball. LeBron should have passed the ball. Why are they doing it that way? And they're in the cheap seats eating their popcorn, right? And they never actually get out there on the court. Then there's the other type of person that would climb the mountain, and he would have just taken off, tried climbing the mountain no matter where it was at. This is, these are the people that just take action. They're so busy, they always need to take action. And then there's a third type of person, which was like me and probably you out there, which is they actually, there was this, this contraption up this mountain where someone would have had to climb the mountain before, invest millions and millions of dollars to build this thing and in 12 minutes by investing in a ticket you could get to the very top and see so many times we try to recreate the wheel and try to do it all over again and try to do it the hard way rather than investing to get the shortcut and so i was like if you want to invest and get a shortcut in your business and life invest in a ticket to bdb live to get you to 9,000 feet so we could build up from there and see how i use something that could get people connected and understand oh my goodness live events are important, I want to be that third type of person. Does that make sense? So now you've got one, you got your mission and vision, the thing that you're passionate about, this is what I want to do. Two, you're speaking that message to get people around it. Number three is how do I make money from this thing, right? Like how do we monetize the people? And this is where I go out and I figure out what is the main core problem or need inside the group. Notice that people don't buy what you think they need, they buy what they think they need, which is actually what we call a want. Right? These are people that want something and typically they're willing, meaning they want the thing and they're able, meaning that they can financially invest in that thing. And so willing and able, and they can invest. When I look at the product or service that's solving the want, typically it's because people don't want to eat healthier, they want to lose weight. So if we try to sell them eat healthier, even though that might be the answer, I want to sell them the thing that they actually want. And I remember transitioning for me when I was first um, building the health and fitness company is I had this product, I was like, okay, lose weight. Like these guys need to like learn all these macronutrient counters and all these things that were all way above what these people would ever know or be able to learn. And I, I started trying to sell that product to them and I thought that if I could sell enough products, then I'd build an audience and I'd gain influence and then I could actually do what I want to do and actually help people out. 
And what I'm sharing with you here in this video is actually reverse engineering it the opposite way. First, figuring out the mission and vision, the impact that you want to create, what you're passionate about. Two, building an audience around those different subjects with the four different ways to tell stories and get it out there like I talked about. And then from there, pulling the people so that you create a product or service that solves a need or a problem inside their life that they actually want. And I remember sitting there, I had just had breakthrough in the health and fitness company, but I just felt like, man, I feel stuck. Like, I don't know if I could keep doing this. I need to figure out what's the next direction. And I started getting back into that mission and vision and, and like trying to put these pieces together. And that's when I learned redefining what it meant to be a businessman. I thought, man, you know what? I want to create this brotherhood. I want to solve this need that all these guys have. And I want to, I want to scratch that itch of that want. And I thought, what's the best way that I could do that? I could probably do it in, inside of a live event. So inside that live event though, I was going to go in debt and even if I sold every ticket to this event, I wasn't going to make any money. So I needed to make sure that I got them connected to something else because I also knew that I had been to an live event before that didn't have any product to invest in. And afterwards, like it just kind of all crumbled apart. We had no like deeper connection. So I didn't want to make that mistake. So I put together this product, this, this service that we were creating, and it was all around the wants of the people. So I started talking to the people on the phone. I started connecting with all the guys that we had uh, had inside of our network, right? I talked about building that audience, started figuring out what was their biggest need, their biggest want, their biggest desires, where was that biggest gap? And then all of a sudden I, I came up with it. And I was like, man, what should I make it? $5,000, $10,000, started freaking out. And I ended up putting it at $10,000 and I was just so nervous to present this to the people because I had I talked about the mission and vision that we had. I had built the audience around it. I had 81 people come to this live event that were at paying attendees and around 100 total. And I remember going up on stage and telling them about this thing that I was launching and I was so nervous because it was to create it for them. And I created around their needs and, and what's so interesting is that all these people were probably sitting there nodding their head going, oh my gosh, that's what I need, that's what I need, that's what I need. And I remember the very first talk of the very first event, I talked about this product, 11 people had bought it right there, 16 by the end of the day, 25, which was the max capacity. By the end of the weekend, sold over $250,000 in sales just from that. Out of those people 12 months later, just in that specific event, we had 20 of them renew. So total in one year, those people did $450,000 in sales. And what's crazy is the impact that we were able to create for them because we didn't make a product and try to shove it down their throat. We actually solved and supported these people, lifted them up. So it shows if 20 to 21 out of 25 of them renewed that it was impactful to them. And that was my experience with instead of going out there and trying to create the product and try to sell it and then try to just figure and then jump from one thing to another. I started the opposite, which is what I share with you today. The three ways to go out there and make your first million was that I started with what I was passionate about. I created the mission and vision. I drilled it down so I didn't get shiny object syndrome. I spoke that message with confidence in all different ways so that I could build the audience around that subject. That doesn't mean you can't start monetizing right away. It just means that you can get the people together and continually serve them to the best capacity. I then took them and figured out, okay, what's the common core problem and need? What's the want that they have that they would fork over dollars for in an instant and we'd have massive rapport with them and how could I deliver that message to them? And I went out there and I delivered that message, absolutely blew up our business and we've helped dozens and dozens and dozens of other men do the same exact thing. So thank you so much for watching this video. Again, go out there and apply these three things to help you make your first million. Again, what was your biggest takeaway? That's what I want to know from you. So drop a comment down below in the comments and I'll see you on the next video.